Hello and welcome to the iGEL Technology Universal Management Suite pre-recorded webinar. My name is Ian Anderson and I'll be here to take you through the UMS basics today. This will include an overview of what UMS is, how it works, how it is installed and will also contain a demonstration of using UMS in anger from installation through to configuration of devices. But before we get started, um, one of the things that we would always recommend is that you take some time to register for our technical newsletter at www.igel.com forward slash en forward slash newsletter and this will allow you to get regular updates, firmware downloads, white papers that are available from uh, iGEL and they'll be sent directly to you. So with that covered off, um, this will be our agenda for the day. So covering off how UMS works, how it's used, along with a demonstration, uh, we'll also touch on our UDC2 or Universal Desktop Converter 2 product towards the end. So what is UMS and what does it allow us to do? Well, UMS is the linchpin of our product lineup. It allows full remote management of all iGEL technology think like devices, whether it's that you want to change a desktop background to deploying critical security related hotfixes or, or simply setting up remote connections. It's all done through our UMS software. The model is one based on remote administration, so 100% remote administration. We want the requirement for having to physically visit endpoint devices to go away. So even when dealing with the remote sites, we really want you to be able to centrally manage all of these, uh, these units. This obviously helps reduce costs as well as just increasing speed and responsiveness for management of your devices. We're also OS independent, so we allow installations on Linux and Windows devices, but we also allow access to any device really that has a web uh, browser. So we have a web, a web console access to our console. Uh, we can integrate with your existing Active Directory to allow importing of management and administrative users. And best of all, we don't really charge you for the privilege of using our software, um, or using our UMS software, I should say. Um, UMS has no payments or subscription freeze. If you purchase an iGEL product, the UMS is free for you to use with that device and for the lifespan of that device. So how does UMS work? Well, it's pretty simple. We have an embedded database that talks to um, the UMS service uh, within the server and then we have a UMS web server which is based on Tomcat that allows communication out to the, to the devices. The UMS console aggregates the information from the database so you can see it as a user and the Think Client devices talk back to the console uh, through various ports so 30005, 30001, 9080 and 8443. The console itself is where your time will be spent looking through um, the devices and managing the devices themselves. So things to remember, um, firmware manuals and UMS updates are all available from the website myigel.biz. It's very important that you know that one. It's, it's really the go-to place to get all this, all this stuff from. Um, when you're installing, proceed with the standard installation. It's really a next, next, next until you have to provide um, the login details that you're going to be using. The server that you're installing on, um, there should be no web server present. Um, so because obviously it stores its own web server, we need to keep that um, clean. And then the ports need to be open for communication between the uh, devices and the console are 30,001, 30,005. And then for firmware updates and for file transfer, we need 9080 and 8443 open. With all those ports and all those requirements, you should be able to install your own UMS server. So with that, um, I will now do a demonstration of a UMS installation and take you through the basics of using UMS. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to visit the myigel.biz website and here you can download the UMS just itself. So I will download UMS. I'm going to use a Windows version as you can see I'm running a Windows device here. I shall download the latest version which is 501.120. Obviously this may change. We'll save the file and this will start to download. Okay, so now through the wonders of editing, the file is downloaded and ready to go. So we will uh, click on the file to run the installation. Okay, so we're going to give this permission. And we're going to click through. We need to accept the license agreement. Obviously, you need to read this. Hit next. 
uh, we're going to do default installation so we're going to use the default locations and because we're installing UMS from scratch we're going to install standard UMS with embedded database so that installs UMS console and database if later on you only wish to install the console then please untick everything and just tick the UMS console so we'll go back to a standard install and hit next Okay, default uh, sorry, data directory as standard, just default it. Obviously, you can change this if you wish. And then we need to specify a username and password. So I'm going to go with administrator and I'll give it a password. Now, obviously, you need to remember what you specify as your password in this section, although if you forget, it's uh, not critical because you can use the UMS administrator program to change that password at a later date. But it's easier just to remember it. So click next, follow the defaults and allow the install to happen. So the install takes only a matter of minutes uh, and then you'll have a full working UMS version. Okay, so there we go, the installation has finished. And you'll see on the desktop we now have a UMS console. Okay, let's just let that finish off. That's the start services and we hit finish. Okay. So now we have a UMS console. So with UMS installed, uh, we will launch the console and this will connect to the server and you'll be asked for login details. Bear in mind that the first uh, login may take a little bit longer than normal. Okay, so I'll enter in my password that I defined earlier. And this will launch UMS. So now you can see we're at the console. Now at this point we have no devices connected to our UMS and this means that the functionality is very limited. So the first thing we need to do is to scan the network and find any iGEL devices that happen to be on the network. Now I'm going to use my local uh, local network um, but obviously you can specify any particular IP ranges or list of IP ranges that you want to, to connect. So I'm running a little flat network here so I'll just scan that. And you can see I've picked up a device. This is a, a UD2 device, one of our, our new UD2s. Um, and you can see that it says here certificate no, and this means that this device has never been connected to a UMS, or that it's been factory reset. If obviously the device has been connected previously, you can factory reset a device because the connection between UMS is certificate based. So when I join this device to my UMS, uh, um, no other UMS will be able to own uh, that relationship with the device until I either factory reset the device or delete it out of UMS itself. So I'm going to tick the include button here and then by default the, the, the device will be placed into the thin client directory. Obviously I can specify where that goes from there. Or later on we can talk about default uh, or automatic configuration which can be done through the misc folder up here and that will allow you to specify by default where particular IP ranges appear in your estate. But for now we'll just leave it in the defaults. So at this point it's using the ports that we specified earlier earlier on to talk to the device and then uh, give it a certificate and then join it into the UMS. So we should see that appear shortly. 